Welcome to Pal World, a world that is filled with pals, and I am going to be spending the next 100 days here attempting to beat the game, or at least survive. And legend has it that these pals are dangerous, so let's not waste any time. Day 1 started with me gathering some wood, building a workbench and a torch, and then it was time to do some damage. I battled this lamb ball and I got some mutton and some wool. I'll figure out what to do with that wool a bit later. About night time, when night falls, your soreness becomes dark, temperature drops, and dangerous pals will appear. <laughs> well, it's dark now. I wonder what's gonna happen. Overnight, I gathered the remaining stuff to craft a stone pickaxe and a stone axe, so that I can get the mining game going. Day 2, I made a campfire and some storage, so I won't have to be carrying everything and weighing myself down. Then I baked some berries to keep myself well nourished. It took a while, but I finally got enough supplies to craft myself an old bow. I hope it doesn't fall apart when I'm using it. And like all bows, we need to craft some arrows to go with it. Then I finally built that pal box the game kept telling me about, and now I have a place I can call home. And now that I've crafted a pal sphere, it's time to go capture something. There was a visitor at my base the next morning, so let's go greet them. Oh, that is damage. Okay. Bruh. Well, that did not work. So now that I know how a pal sphere does not work, let's figure out how it does work. Let's try it against that guy. Okay. And that's how you solve the mystery of the pal sphere. So I deployed the guy at the base and he just went off doing his own thing. Okay. That works. And with that, I crafted even more pal spheres because, well, I know how to use them now. Later, I crafted a pal bed for the guy so that he won't go insane due to a lack of sleep. Because that's a thing. It happened to me before. I ain't gonna let it happen to these guys. There we go, little buddy. I then crafted a feed box so that any pals working at my base would automatically eat and not starve. All I gotta do is... Get some food and put it in the feed box and all will be good. The next morning I built a bed for myself. Yes, I know it's facing the wrong way and don't worry, it never changed. A berry plantation was built or set up and work had to be done. What do I gotta do now? Nothing? Got it. To be safe, I crafted even more pal spheres so I won't run out of pal spheres when I find something because not everything is going to be a 100% capture rate, I'm sure. Well, it's day 5 now, and it's time to go capture some pals. Okay, so I understand it. The more you hurt it, the easier it is to capture. Got it. Let's throw it at 49%. Let's see what happens. Just wait... Searching and capturing pals went on into the night because, well, I was enjoying it too much. I crafted a cloth outfit which protects against the cold so now I can explore the night without requiring a torch in my hand. And I also crafted a common shield for some extra defense because, you know, you'll never know when you'll need it. Later that day, I built this statue of power which will allow me to enhance my capturing power or enhance certain aspects of my pals. Later that day, I went around the area just wreaking havoc, not knowing that capturing pals reward more XP for the first 10 times for each pal. So, yeah. That night, I found a pal that I haven't seen before and apparently doesn't show up during the daytime because I haven't seen it during the day. Battling it rewarded me with a venom gland. Something I'm sure I'm gonna need later on. Then I saw this guy and attempted to capture it, which honestly I should have done with the previous one because I would have gotten more XP for it. Okay. 
Let's try it again. Fine. I became a farmer on day 7 and started building a ranch. Because, well, you know, farming is one of the most important aspects of life. And before I even get to do anything with the ranch, I have to fend off against some starving wild pals. Oh, great. Come on, get out of here, mate. Hey, is that it? The enemy has been defeated. Ah! I deployed some lambos at the base so that they will automatically produce wool so I won't always have to go out and get it myself. I built a PAL gear workbench the next day so that I can access PAL gear, which when crafted will let me access PAL partner skills, which will allow them to be very useful in combat. Well, it's day 9 now and it's back to capturing some more PALs, because I gotta complete this tutorial somehow. And this was the moment when I finally found out that you get more XP for capturing the first 10 of a specific type of pal. Then I tried to capture this thing and you wanna know what happened? I got my butt handed to me and I barely escaped. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Is it coming this way? Of course it's coming this way. Day 10, I learned that pals can have passives, which can either be positive or negative, and they can affect either the player or the pal themselves. So now, I have to look out not only for good pals, but good pals that have good passives, so that I can get the maximum value out of each and every pal that exists. And no, I can't move. Great. I built a logging site and a stone pit in my base, and I'm not sure why, because there's a lot of rocks and trees in my base that keep respawning. That night, I built a crusher and realized I can't even use it because I don't have a pal with the watering suitability. It requires pal with the watering treat to spin. Ah! Oh. I went on a capturing spree on day 11 for more XP. And then I found a new pal by the name of Pingulet. Well, of course, I must try to capture it, but I didn't have enough firepower, and the capture probability just wasn't high enough for me to actually confidently capture it, and I am not sure why it has that gold aura thing around it. So in the end, I just abandoned that mission and just got out of there. Then I headed back to base and crafted a whole bunch of arrows. First thing on day 12, I got an upgrade to my old bow. Now it can fire three arrows for the price of one, doing even more damage. And with that extra bit of confidence with this new bow, I headed back out to see what I can find on this day. Hopefully I do find something good. Well, I found whatever this is and I tried to capture it. And that I did. Then I found this big guy. Well, this guy is a boss, so I'm definitely not going to be taking that one now. And there it is, the first fire pal of this journey. A type of pal that I need in order to power furnaces. So I'm definitely going to try for this guy. Except there was one small problem. <sighs> I had no pal spheres, so that, uh, that did not happen. So because of that little mishap earlier today, I decided to mass produce pal spheres for the entire night. So that hopefully I will not run out of them this time. First thing on day 13, I was minding my own business and then there was another raid. Oh, come on. What? What is this now? I don't know why I'm gathering ore. I can't even smelt it. That night I found another pingulet and yes, I should have captured it, but instead I didn't. But I found out where I get PAL fluids from. I spent the night outside discovering a few new PALs and yes, regrettably not capturing them because XP is a thing and I apparently don't need it. 
I saw this guy here and I'm not sure why I attempted this, but here we go. What is criminal activity? Anyways, moving on. I also unlocked a new type of PAL sphere, so capturing PALs is gonna be a bit easier now. Well, I go after the furnace and put some stuff to smelt, but I can't get anything because I need a fire pal. So I need to go out and get one. Well, I did find a fox box and after some battling, I was able to make it mine. Now I can light that furnace and get some sweet, sweet ingots. Found another pengulet for more pal fluids. No, I still didn't capture it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why. I found another fox box that night. So I tried to capture it, because if I can power two furnaces at the same time, that means more ingots. The guy was a bit cheeky, so I had to try it again. Oh, there we go. Day 15 comes along, and I'm just casually mining some stone to do some stuff around the base. And there was another raid. Oh, come on. Now what? So now it's time to fight off these guys, and uh, then this happened. Yeah, the game's an early access, so you gotta expect stuff like this. I built a hot spring for all the working pals around the base so that they won't go insane. Because, yeah, that's a thing. Day 16, with all of those ingots I got from the fox box, thank you very much, sir, I made a metal pickaxe and a metal axe. Now all of my mining and logging will be a lot faster. And then, with some more ingots, smelted by the awesome fox box, I was able to make myself a crossbow. Which will do even more damage. Because damage is awesome. Of course, when I am dealing it, not when taking it. Day 17 began with me making some of these mega spheres. So now I will be able to capture anything a lot easier. Or at least a bit easier. I haven't tested it yet, so I don't know. And now to test the crossbow. Oh, that is damage. You know, I thought. The megaspheres are supposed to make capturing easier. The crossbow is just killing them. I can't even capture anything. But there's nothing a little bit of bashing and dashing can solve. Just melee them a little bit instead. The only thing is I gotta get up close and personal. The 18 started with me building some more pal beds. Because when I get more pals, they're gonna need to be able to sleep at night. So might as well place some down right away. I found another fox box on day 18, so I had to make it mine, because why not, right? I saw this flying pal earlier, but never attempted it because, you know, it was a flying pal and he seems dangerous. But now that I have better gear, I attempted it. And my efforts actually paid off because I was able to get it. Nice! Now I have my first flying pal. Zero percent. Okay, that is not what I was meant to do. Well, this is awesome. So I'm just glad the guy actually de after some time because, yeah, I was not surviving that. I saw a few of these deer looking things and I wanted to see if I can make any of them mine. Oh, there's one. There we go. Well, I finally decided to capture a pingulet this time instead of actually killing it. And I also captured another fox box that night, because they are just awesome! As well as a daydream, even though they only come out at night. Day 19, me and a fox box went out adventuring to see what we can find. And yeah, it's back to not capturing because I completely forgot about the XP bonus again. Yay me! Later that day, I learned that this fox box in particular works 50% faster. You know what that means? This guy is definitely getting deployed at the base. Because if he can work faster, things will get done a lot sooner. 
The next day I built a weapon workbench which will let me craft weapon based items a bit faster. And that's always good. I also unlocked a new tier of PAL sphere so I got to crafting some of those immediately. Because easier PAL capturing will always be welcome. Before day 20 was over I wanted to attempt my first dungeon. And this was the only one I found so this one will have to do. Go on. Fast chops. Oh yes. It was a bit confusing inside here because I wasn't sure where to go and there were so many places to go I felt like I was going in circles. But I did find a chest and got some nice, nice gold. I gotta be able to do something with that. Well, it's day 21 now. And yes, I'm still in this dungeon because I still don't know where to go. Well, it took an entire day and night, but I finally found the boss arena. I wanted to battle this fox fox by myself, at least not with my fox fox attacking, because I wanted to see if I can actually capture this guy. Let's try. So I got myself a boss fox box in the end, and that was very awesome. I got some ancient civilization parts as well. So that's always good, because I'm pretty sure I needed that. There were two chests at the end of the dungeon, and I got two schematics from them. One of which was legendary, which means it has to be good. And just like that, I have successfully completed my first dungeon. A schematic is like a blueprint for a better version of the item that the schematic is for. The only thing is that it costs a lot more items to craft. At the end of the day, I crafted a mega shield for mega defense. I also made some more Giga Spheres because it's time to capture bigger pals. Yep, you guessed it. Another raid. Awesome. <sighs> Never gonna get a chance, am I? What? They're just standing there. Okay. I think this is a bug. They're not supposed to be doing this. Alright. No way they're supposed to just stand up there and do nothing. Look at this guy. This guy, like he's lost. Contemplating life, perhaps? After farming for a bit on day 22, I was finally able to make the Nightwing saddle. Now I can take to the skies and pretty much go anywhere. I also made a poison arrow crossbow and poison arrows to go with it. Because pals afflicted with any kind of status ailment will become easier to capture while afflicted with that status ailment. And now it's time for me to test my power against the thing that almost destroyed me. Wrong button. Oh wow. Ouch. Try to capture it. Now, please. And I was finally able to capture the guy. That felt good. There is nothing better to start your day than a raid. Another raid! Oh, and a level up. Of course, it's another bugged out raid because the game's in early access, but you know, I'm all fine with that. I built another hot spring today because there were now more pals at my base and I didn't want any of them to go insane. I went out that night to capture some pals that I don't have so I will know what they can do at the base. Pal capturing went on into the next day because I was looking for a pal that can water even though I already have one and completely forgot that I got it. Don't kill it. Two. Oh, another one. Oh. There we go. Stop running. There we go. I found this cute little guy here, and he looks very electric 
I want it. Come on. I found one of these tree thingies and they usually have some kind of fruits on them. These fruits actually, when used on pals, g give them certain attacks that other pals may have, which is very nice. With these fruits, you can actually make a fire pal do ice attacks and an ice pal do fire attacks. I saw another one of these guys while I was out exploring. Tested the Nightwing on it a bit, and then made it mine. And it's dead. Nice. Late that night, I saw two mammoths fighting each other. I'm not sure why, but I thought I'd take advantage of that situation and get some nice, nice loot. Mammoth. Meat. Leather. You see this bag hiding at the bottom over here? Yeah, that was high quality pal oil, and I never saw it. I went ahead to battle the second one because it was already at low health, so I had a good chance of taking it down, and that I did. I found another fast travel point at some settlement looking area with armored people with guns, so yeah, I'm definitely not gonna go in there. I fought another Nightwing, and luckily I was able to capture it because that was my last good pal sphere. I found another one of these tree things and got three more skill fruits. One was a fire tornado thing, one was a dragon breath, and the other was a kind of a stone throw thing. That night I played around with this night ring because I used literally all of my fruits on this guy, so I will know what each and every move that I have unlocked for him does. Tombat. What? Okay. That's a, that's a big boy. I gotta say, the stone cannon, as well as some of the other skills, are actually pretty good. <laughs> wow. And after taking out a lot of these syndicate thug guys, at this camp, I was able to free this cute little pal. Apparently, freeing him also acts as a capture, so he uh, went to my pal box instead of being free to roam the world. That's a free capture right there. That's nice. I spent the rest of the day doing some building, setting up some foundations and infrastructure so that all the pals will be able to sleep soundly at night in one location, really. And this is what I did. And despite building all of those beds, some of the pals were actually sleeping on the ground all over the base. So I'm not really sure what's uh, going on with that. The next day was a good one. I made myself a gun. Well, time to test this bad boy out. Soon. Can I get some help here, please? Hello? Yep, I was crafting so much and cooking so much that it went on into night and it still took all night day 29 i learned that i can lift up my pals and toss them around the base assigning them to different tasks so i was just experimenting around with that and yes it took all day another raid happened on day 29 this time syndicate raiders now this rifle deals some big damage, but it has a big reload time, so yeah. It's one of those guns where I can say, guns not just about shooting, it's about reloading. You'll know what I'm talking about. The cooler box is cool and all, but I think it only really works when there is a PAL working at it. So it doesn't really refrigerate as good as I thought it would. From my previous adventures, I had gotten some wheat seeds, so I was finally able to make a wheat plantation and get some wheat going. Now I'll be able to make flour, which is one of the ingredients required for cake. 
And yes, cake is required for breeding, which makes total sense. And you make flour at the mill, but you need a watering pile in order to actually get the flour made. Day 30, I finally got electric power. Of course, it took a while because, you know, work had to be done. I also built this toolbox, which will provide a small boost to all handiworkers in the base. And to actually power the electric generator, you need an electric pal. Luckily, I had found some of those earlier in one of my adventures. I do not know why it took this long, but I finally got some torches down around the base so I can see things at night. And I spend the night crafting ammo, because these things take forever. The next day, I built this flame cauldron, which should speed up all of the kindling processes around the base, which is, again, very nice. After that, I went into the dungeon at the Rain Syndicate Tower again to get some ancient civilization parts. And I also got a schematic for a feathered hairband, but I'm probably not going to use it since it's just a tier 1. I also tried to capture a tombat that night, but I accidentally killed it instead, which is just amazing. And all this time, I never actually knew that there was a boss fight at the actual tower, and you actually had to go to the tower to access the boss fight. So yay me for now figuring that out. So if you've been struggling in your game to actually defeat the boss at the Wien Syndicate Tower, now you have an easy method. Just get a Nightwing, which is pretty easy to get early game once you have a Mega Sphere, and level it up by just doing random stuff, capturing pals and all that. As long as it's with you, it'll level up whenever you do something, and then take it to the boss battle and be victorious. I noticed I got a very big chunk of XP for actually defeating this boss, so I wanted to do it again. Also to see if I will get the same amount of XP again, and I did. So if you can easily take down any of the big bosses like this, I'm sure there are more, it's an easy XP farm, as long as you're willing to do the boss battle over and over like this. I built a breeding farm at my base the next day. All I need to get now is some good, strong, powerful pals that can do lots of stuff, breed them and get more. The only thing is, I need to get cake and I am still missing some stuff like milk and honey. And I'm not really sure exactly where I'm gonna find those things. So yeah, it might be a long wait. And I made myself yet another gun. 
Time to go shoot up something. But to do that, I need ammo, so I spent literally the rest of the day doing just this. It was fun. The next day was me mining ore so that I can get more ingots smelted. And then I made myself a PAL condenser. So that maybe one day I'll figure out how to use it and make my PALs even stronger. It wasn't that hard to figure out, but the PAL condenser essentially combines PALs together to create a higher ranked one which has more attack, higher defense and more health. But really, to do that, you're gonna need a lot of the same PALs. And I mean a lot, because I've only been able to get a PAL to level 2 so far. And that takes 4 PALs, well 5. The first one, which is the one you select, and then the other four, which you sacrifice to actually level the one that you selected up. But to level it up again, you're going to need even more than that. So maybe later on, when I am finally able to make cake efficiently, breeding might be the best option to get as many pals as I need to make the strongest pals possible. Then a large dark egg was incubated and a tombat was born. Hey, I was actually able to get a tombat even though I accidentally killed one. At least now I know I can get pals I don't have from eggs that I can't find. Oh wow, this guy is great at mining, gathering and transporting. He's probably better than all of the other guys I have at the base right now. I know that one of the things that I need is a lot more pals, especially new ones that I don't have. So I will actually know what they can do. So I started by making some gigaspheres, because that's the best I can make right now. Eh, it's no big deal. It only costed like about all of my ingots, so now I gotta spend a lot more time getting all of those ingots back. The next day I wanted to build a production assembly line, except that there's one small problem. The base is too congested and there's no space for it. So, time for me to go to work. Well, there's one production assembly line done. A logging site, a stone pit, and some trees gone. And soon after that, I got some visitors. The next day, I built some high-quality pal beds for the pals to be even more comfortable at night, so that they will be even more willing to work. I wanted to level up a cativa and a lamball, so I started by trying to capture these guys, but that didn't went so well. So after that little fiasco, I had to search for some more, capturing literally any ones that I can find, so that hopefully I will eventually have enough to use the PAL condenser and make some of them stronger. And it was this day I chose to take on the big bad king of the forest. What made this guy far more difficult was the extreme damage reduction that it has. Like look at that! You're seeing 1 and 2 damage, not even double digits. Like, what's going on? So after reassessing the situation, I uh, was not in the position to actually challenge this guy. So I just ran away until he decided to leave me alone and headed back to base. Then I built a sphere assembly line which gave me access to hyperspheres, which can capture even more powerful pals. And capturing more powerful pals is exactly what I need. All I need now is to make some cement. Ugh, this takes forever. I went back to this boss battle again to test out some of the pals that I haven't tested yet, such as the monkey with gun. And I gotta say, monkey with gun is pretty awesome. Only if you would actually be 100% accurate when you are not aiming. There was uh, one small thing I forgot to do. I should have leveled all of these pals up first. So yeah, I did not really get to test them efficiently. My bad. I battled this boss a few more times. Yes, I know, I'm doing the same thing over and over. But I wanted XP and this was kind of like the fastest way that I know so far. So yes, I just went on battling this boss over and over to get some XP to level up to get better stuff. Then I built a monitoring stand to brutally overwork those pals. No, I'm just kidding, I won't do that. Day 39, I struggled to try to set this ranch up again because I had to destroy it to set up the production lines. Yes, the next day I went into the dungeon again, but this time it was a boss that I haven't seen, so, you know, that's good because if I can see different bosses that I haven't seen before, then I could try to capture it. Maybe I'll get a new creature that I don't have already, and that will be very good because then I will be able to know in the PAL deck where I can find more of these creatures. Pals, I mean. 
That night I found an abandoned mineshaft, but when I went inside I couldn't even see myself. So of course I struggled to get back out, it took me like 10 minutes to get back out. Exploring on day 41 led me to this guy, whom of course I must challenge, but of course it didn't go as planned because I was taking all of the damage. I spent the entirety of the next day making some grenades. What can I say? I'm a big fan of explosives. I like when things go boom. I spent the entirety of day 43 right here at this production line making cement because it takes so darn long. Then I made a high quality hot spring for my pals to enjoy and keep sane. Nice! After being raided by those NPC syndicate thugs so many times I thought you know what maybe I should raid them and I took their pal too. I saw another Vixie and wanted to capture it but... Uh, I found a different dungeon, finally, but it has the same name and the same level boss, so I'm not sure if it's actually a different dungeon or not. Well, the dungeon did feel the same and did look the same, but there were definitely different pals inside here, new ones that I haven't seen before, so I definitely took advantage of that and captured some of them. Well, I made it to the boss arena after some time and this was definitely a new pal. I was not passing this opportunity up. Oh, that's good. Can't move. The two chests at the end here rewarded me with two skills that I haven't seen before. So that's actually pretty good. I wanted to continue exploring the next day but I had to go back to base to drop off all of the stuff that I have so that I'll actually be able to move at the speed that I can actually notice. And of course, it just had to happen. So I went in to show them who's boss. Oh, and I got absolutely obliterated. Really? Well, that's fun. And respawning was probably the best idea I had yet. <laughs> so I tried respawning at the fast travel point outside my base and started attacking them from outside the base. I had to be very careful because I had no armor, which means I would take full damage. So it looks like the raid only lasts a certain amount of time. And after that, all of the creatures and pals and people that showed up to raid your base would just leave after that time. Which is cool and all, which means, you know, I actually get to repair some stuff and not actually have to rebuild everything. I also learned that if any of your pals are defeated, you don't actually lose them. They just have to stay in the pal box for a set amount of time. And then they can be redeployed to continue doing whatever they were doing. So after the absolute awesomeness of day 46, I just chilled out that base on day 47, day and night, trying to figure out what to do next, because the next raid I'm probably not gonna survive. At all. Like, the entire base is probably gonna get destroyed. So I spend the entire day trying to figure out what I should do to prepare for that. It's day 48 now and I started working on supplies for my next big adventure because it's gonna be a big one because there are three things I need to find. Honey, milk and oil. None of which I know how to find or where to find them. So I started exploring uncharted territory in hopes of finding the things that I need in life. It didn't take too long for me to find honey. I just needed to locate some of these butterfly looking pals and either capture or slay them and I'll get some honey. A new pal means I must test some limits and see if I can capture it. And I was able to capture it with the first sphere. That was very nice. I captured my first gale claw that night. Captured another butterfly pal for some more honey. I found a catress the next morning and I died trying to capture it. I made it back to my death location but I had some unwelcome visitors that I had to take care of before I can retrieve my stuff. And after capturing a few more of these butterfly pals, I finally have a breed pier. Well, I found another dungeon. Yeah, that level was a little too high for me so I uh, said no to that. Well, I found my first large egg that night and I gotta say it got me a bit hyped because it's the first large egg I found and I have no idea what it is. I found some coal on the 50 so now I can make some refined ingots and get myself some better gear. That coal was so down heavy I had to call the exploration off because I had to go back and drop it off because I was completely unable to move. Then I spent the rest of the day checking out the new pals I got and observing and taking note of what they can do. 
and what they can do better than the pals that I had before. Day 51, I fast traveled here to the small settlement, but because of that armed guy over there, I'm still afraid to go in. I do not know if I can go in there and not trespass, because I've heard in one of the survival guide things that trespassing is a thing. So I am not going in there because I don't know if I'll get literally gunned down for trespassing. Later that day, I destroyed some guys and freed this little guy. Which, I also found out, gives pal oil. So that's good to know. Exploring, I was able to find enough life monk effigies to enhance my capture power to the next level at this church in the Seabreeze Archipelago. So I found this guy just roaming about here. Seems to have a bit of a boss health bar like that Mamorist back in the first area. And taking him out gave me an ancient technology point. So now I know I can take out these bosses that roam around to get some ancient technology points instead of searching for dungeons. Destroying these fellas here allowed me to free this fiery looking puppy known as Arzox. And the guy is better at kindling than those fox foxes, which means I gotta get me some more of these guys. I was able to capture this woolly horse the next morning called Melpaka. It's similar to the lamb ball in the sense that it can produce wool when it's assigned to a ranch. So that's always good. Then I took on this boss called Broncherry, if that's how you say that. I was able to take it down pretty quickly and got myself another ancient technology point. I also got some tomato seeds, so that's great because now I can start a tomato plantation and have infinite tomatoes. I like that. Another roaming boss was defeated and I got myself another technology point. After all this searching, I still have not found any milk yet. Remember that. I still have not found any milk. Well, there's a bit of a bug for you. I can't pick up any of these ingots and my inventory is not full. So, uh, pocket peer, could you do something about that, please? Thank you very much. After booting up the game again, I was able to collect those ingots and I made myself a refined metal pick and a refined metal axe. And right as I was doing that, the best thing ever happened. Come on! There's so much stuff happening right now, I'm not even sure what is going on. I don't even know if I am winning or if I am losing. Well, time to just sit back and uh, watch the show because there's nothing I can do about that. Yes, I was actually panicking so much that I didn't even know that this Nightwing was actually mine. What? Oh, that's mine. Wow. Well, I'm not sure if I won or if I lost, but they are no longer here. And I was able to hatch this large electric egg in peace as well. And it turns out to be a Rayhound, which is very good because it's a pal that I haven't found yet. I was able to get the refined tools that I wanted after all that chaos. Now I can harvest a lot faster and hopefully get things done a bit quicker so that maybe the next raid won't be so much of a disaster. With those refined tools, I spent the entire day mining for ore and also looking for ore because I haven't really looked around all that much for ore. So it took a while, but I got some and now it's ready to be smelted. The only thing is I have to wait for the next day now. And while I waited for the morning, I crafted some hypospheres. One of the things I have been lacking in ever since I started was PAL souls, each and every kind, small, medium and large. I know where I can find small PAL souls, mostly from these chests and a few of these night PALs, but the medium and large ones, yeah, I've been struggling to find any of those. So I haven't really been able to enhance any of the work speeds on those PALs, so yeah, everything is kind of like just dragging at this point. I also crafted some ice grenades, sounds a bit cold, hopefully they will actually freeze my opponents. Well, I finally found my first wandering merchant. The guy is a beast of a level. Hopefully he has some good stuff for me. And there it is. The milk that I have been searching for the past 30 days to find. So I was sure to buy a hefty amount. I went around capturing more pals for more XP later because I still need more XP. There's a lot of levels to get and a lot more stuff to unlock. I decided to try out this dungeon, and you see that smile right there? That is something I hope to never see again in life. Capturing it was a success. Now I know all about it.
So I finally figured out these dungeons. The level of the boss determines what kind of pals and enemies you would find inside here as well as what level they would be. Even though the rooms and areas in the dungeon is pretty much the same as that of every other dungeon, the enemies and the experience isn't. So this is what an ice grenade does. It seems to have some sort of either cooldown or build up because throwing a second one didn't actually freeze it again. And capture is successful. When I made it to the boss arena, it seems a bit intimidating. It was a close one. I almost got absolutely destroyed again. And for my trouble, all I got was high grade technical manuals, which yeah, was free technology points, but come on, I could have gotten better. The next day I found another boss that I haven't beaten yet. So I was sure to take it out to get that ancient technology point. And yes, I learned my lesson. I will always attempt to capture the things that I attack, especially when I meet them for the first time. This is the first time I've seen so many of the same pals in the same location like this. It would have been a waste of spheres because I'm using the spheres specifically to get all of the bonus XP that I can get so that I can level up and unlock everything as fast as I can because those raids are getting very, very difficult. I don't know if this is a bug or anything, but the specific set of attacks I have equipped on the Nightwing just isn't working. Every time I dismount and remount it, it's changing, and I don't know why. Then I found my first shiny pal, and it's a Kativa. And look at that capture rate. Like, what? Also, what do these guys do though? Like, what, 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 what's with them? So it looks like every time you attack a shiny pal, everything in the immediate area starts attacking you. Would you believe it if I told you that I am still trying to find a pal that I can get milk from? Yeah, I still haven't found one yet. Isn't that just amazing? After escaping that shiny pal and all of his reinforcements, I bag myself a loop moon. These guys are awesome because they have level 2 handiwork and only level 2 handiwork, which means they would not do anything else in the base. So if you have something to craft, they will immediately come over and start crafting it with you or by themselves if you leave them to do it by themselves. The point is, they will craft anything you set down to craft. They won't go and do something else. And there it is. After 40 flipping days of searching, I finally found a creature that I can get milk from. Isn't that just amazing how long it took? Well, this guy looks like a monster. I hope he is, because I'm gonna come back for him. I came over here because these Dumar pals give oil and the pal deck says this is one of their habitats. There's one small problem. Here is a desert which means it's very hot and I did not bring any heat resistant armor. So I couldn't venture in here for too long because I'll burn up due to the heat. So I had to try to get some pal oil and then head back home and make that heat resistant armor and then return later. I couldn't find a fast travel point anywhere nearby but I got distracted by these life monk effigies. I made it back to base just in time for the show. Yeah, at this point I'm starting to think that these raids really are bogged out. Something's going on here. Oh yes, I am making cake finally. But look at how slow it is. That is going nowhere, mate. Uh-huh. Guys, I'm still baking this cake. Like, the first one isn't even done yet. And the entire day is over. So the first breeding operation is a happening. Ooh, Felbat is a bit of a chief, isn't she? Look at that medicine production. There's one problem. There's no medicine to produce. I then fiddled around with the pal condenser a bit to make some pals stronger, but also to reduce the amount of random pals in the pal box. Day 62 was a relaxing day. I just spent the entire day at base relaxing with my pals. The Nightwing egg was incubated and hatched the next day. I gotta breed a lot more of these guys so that I can actually use a pal condenser and make one of them very strong. As strong as possible because why not, right? Working around the base day and night, I was finally able to make myself a single shot rifle. It's actually more powerful than the musket I've been using and it reloads a lot faster. Another issue I've been having around the base was storage. Maybe now with this refined metal chest and its larger inventory, I would be able to solve that problem. 
I spend the rest of the day gathering a lot of ore to make a lot of ingots so that I can craft this big bad boy. It has a much larger inventory space so it will solve my storage problem for a little while. Just out of curiosity I wanted to build one of these refined metal chests to see just how much inventory they have. It turns out they have the same inventory as that giant container. So there's no reason for that giant container. You might as well just build a lot more of these and work with these. And that's exactly what I did. The next morning started with me crafting up a lot of hyperspheres because there's a lot more pals to capture and a lot of XP to get. I decided to take on my first Mamoris, like 1v1, to see if I can actually take it down or at least capture it. But with a low capture rate like that, it probably wasn't gonna happen without spending a lot of spheres. Also, I didn't actually get to capture it because the poison killed it. So, yeah. No. And I found the chest but had no silver keys to open it. That night I captured a robin quill with just a single sphere. That was some serious probability right there. I tried to capture another Marmorest but that didn't go so well. It took like 5 of my spheres and then after that the poison wore off so the capture rate dropped tremendously so yeah that did not happen. I found a level 45 boss Yormantide the next day. I was tempted to battle it but chose not to because of that level. If I did, I probably would have woken up at base. I wanted to capture some of these bronze cherries because they increase your weight carrying capacity when they are in your inventory. But today was just not my day, this was the only one I found. I captured a new pal today called Univolt and the guy seems like a pretty chill guy. I wanted to capture some more Auzoxes as well to speed up refining at the base. Ouch. Nice. I found another dungeon on day 68. And it's just a level 19 boss, so you know for sure I'm definitely gonna do that. It's a pretty simple dungeon. Shoot up some pals, capture them if you so want to, make it to the boss, defeat the boss, collect the loot and leave. Now it's time to try out one of these Evergold looking things. Yes, that's from Elden Ring. So I'm expecting a boss immediately. And that's exactly what it was. But I'm not gonna pass up this opportunity, I'm gonna try to capture this guy. It took some spheres but I was finally able to make it mine. And now it's time to see what this bad boy can do. Waiting to greet me outside were two highly aggressive loop moons. After a bit of battle I was able to capture them both. I saw a boss nightwing later and I tried to capture it. Apparently these are alpha pals. But I have no idea what they do. Like what is different between the normal pal and the alpha pal. Now for me to craft any of the higher tier crafting stations I need to find quartz so that I can make those circuit boards. The only problem is I had no idea where to find it. I couldn't find any quartz anywhere where I was or anywhere that I have been so it was time to go to places that I haven't been. The first thing I noticed was how high of a level these pals are. I'm definitely not here to battle any of them. I am just here to get some quartz to get my circuit boards made. I also learned that the higher the level the pal is the harder it is to capture. Which, uh, yeah, seemed obvious, but, you know, now I had the proof. Just look at that level. That probably would destroy me. Well, I finally found the quartz. It only took one day, which was pretty good. Unlike that adventure for milk. Well, all I need now is to make some polymer, which I need pal oil for, and I had some of those. So the polymer was made, and then a lot of circuit boards was made too. And like the hard worker that I am, I spent all night crafting circuit boards. Awesome! I assigned a breeding pair of Auzoxes at the breeding farm so I can get some more Auzoxes to fuel all of those fires in those furnaces so that I can get those ingots a bit faster. Of course I can't forget the cake needed for breeding because again that makes total sense. I finally had enough stuff to craft this legendary schematic. But look at that work! And look at how slow it is! Uh, well that's probably another day for ya. If you wanted to know how much better the legendary armor was compared to the original, it seems to be about 60% better. Which is to me a bit disappointing. And this is how I spent my evening. So enjoy. I spent day 73 gathering the supplies to craft this quivern saddle. I hope that's how you say that. If not, well, too bad. This quivern became my new best friend because it travels a lot faster and its stamina depletes a lot slower. Another Nightwing meant another capture because that was one less Nightwing I would have to capture or breed in order to get the one that I already have to maximum power. I decided to take on the king of the forest in battle one last time and I am now the king of the forest. Well, I found a spot that has a lot of ore in it and 
Here it is if you haven't found it yet. Another ever goal means another boss battle. Yes, I am calling it ever goals because that's where I saw it first. This time it's a catress, if that's how you say that. And since it's the first one I've seen, you know I'm gonna try to capture it. The capture was a success and now I have a catress and I've got no idea what it can do. The next day I went back to battle this quivern again to get a breed pair, but I didn't. Later I found a univolt and captured it, then fought some mammalists for some more oil. The next day I met a new pal by the name of Relaxorus and I wanted to capture it because I wanted to know what he can do. I found another bun cherry so now I can add that to my party and gain an extra 100 wheat. And also a vanna room. Guy looks a bit intimidating and seems to be a bit fiery. Maybe he's better at kindling? At the end of the day, I got a sphere assembly line 2 down which will give me access to the last two tiers of spheres. An electric furnace was set up the next day which gave me access to pal ingots and also faster smelting speeds. That night I built a PAL box in this location so I can fast travel to it to get ore whenever I need it. Reading through the PAL deck I learned that Grizzbolt, you know the boss that you had to fight at the Rain Syndicate Tower, can actually spawn here in the wild. So I came here in hopes of finding one, but there was none. Attacking a Penking PAL caused this to happen, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do with that or what it meant. Now I got this thing on my screen and I'm not sure how to make it go away, but I captured a Patalia. There was coal and ore here on this island so I wanted to set up a PAL box, but I couldn't find any stone on this giant rock. Also what is it with this shiny thing around this guy? What does that mean? I was able to set up the PAL box here on the island after destroying the PAL box I had where all of the ore was, so now I had access to both coal and ore. I gotta say, this electric furnace with this Alzox was smelting those base ingots very fast. Then I destroyed the production assembly line 1 and set up a production assembly line 2 because it's faster and I would have access to even more things. Oh hello. Then I spent like 50 years crafting this rare heat resistant metal armor and all I got for it was more durability, not even more defense. After deploying Catrus at base I learned that she can actually work at night. Which is pretty awesome because now stuff can actually get done at night. Day 81 I finally crafted that hip lantern I wanted on day 25. Now I can see my way around at night and in those mine shafts. I started making this strange juice afterwards because it claims to significantly increase work speed. I just did not know it was gonna take 50 years to actually get it. Well it's almost the end of the next day and I still haven't gotten this yet. And after all of that it only works for 5 seconds. The next day a sphere assembly line tier 2 was crafted so you know exactly what that means. I now have access to those big balls, I mean spheres. This king of the forest kept respawning so I kept taking it down because that was some free pal oil. I went to fight Catrus again in hopes of capturing it because I could use another one at the base. Early the next morning I battled some thugs and freed this pal or more like claimed it for myself. I bashed my way through this dungeon the next day to get some pallium fragments to make some pal ingots to make those big balls. Oh, now that's a shotty. Ouch. Yeah, that's a shotgun. The next day I found a mineshaft and I was able to go inside because of that lantern I crafted a while back. At the end of the mineshaft was a boss, one that I haven't seen either so you know I tried to capture it. But there was just one small problem, stop blocking me. You're blocking! You are blocking! And in the end I was able to capture it with one of those big balls. Another ever goal means another boss fight. This time it was Relaxorus Lux.
And just like that, I bagged myself an Alpha Relaxorus Lux. What got me excited about this guy was that. Rapid Fire Missile Launcher. Oh, I need to see that. That evening, I went over to the desert to wreak havoc. Also to gather some pal oil because I couldn't find any mama rests. Maybe they went extinct. I'm not sure what caused that. Oh, hello. What's this? Dig toys. And he's aggressive. And after setting it on fire and poisoning it, I was able to capture it. Oh, hello. What's that? Anubis. My most difficult encounter throughout this entire journey. This guy is a literal monster. And I learned one thing. I was definitely not prepared for this. Ah. This guy had like 15 different attacks and they were all hitting like a Mack truck. The only option I had was to flee and hope that he left me alone. Ah, D88. D88 was a fun one. I got raided again. What the hell? Okay, I don't even know what's going on. I have literally no idea what is going on right now. Well, I made it out of that alive, somehow. But a lot of my structures needed to be repaired. And I never got to that. Day 89 was a good one. I got my hands on some of those best balls. And then I tested it out on this Mamorest and he got no chance against these balls. The next day I went looking for a better base location because the one I have was a bit too small and congested. I searched and searched but I couldn't really find one that I liked. So that day was just a bit of a waste. I was looking for a base location that didn't have any rocks or trees inside of the sphere around the PAL box. Because I wanted the PALs to do certain tasks and not mine and log all day. I found another roaming boss later that day after a frustrating search. I took on this boss and claimed that ancient technology point for myself. I set up another electric furnace the next morning because smelting those PAL ingots were just very, very slow. As you can see here, I've been struggling to find PAL souls. Criminal activity is still underway. Yes, that is still on my screen every time I come here. I'm pretty sure it's a bug. Well, I finally found one. A Grizzbolt in the flesh. And now it was time to make him mine. There you go. Again, he did not stand a chance against these balls. Yes, I went back to that dungeon at the Syndicate Tower again. This time for some manuals to get points to unlock the minigun for the big guy. That's what I want. I spent the next day setting up a bit of an outpost-like base here so that I can have some mining pals and transporting pals gathering ore for me while I am out and about. The big bad king of the forest had respawned again, so you know what that meant. Free XP. Okay, fine. 36% I mean, I ain't taking that chance. Two health! Look at that! Could you imagine dying to a boss that you brought down to 2 HP? I saw a breed pair of hell zephyrs that night and I just couldn't let that opportunity go. The next day I found a dungeon near to where I found the quartz. Which means this was a high level dungeon. Of course I must attempt it. Well this dungeon definitely did not look like the ones I've been in before. And those levels definitely ain't what I've tackled before either. So this dungeon is gonna be a bit of a challenge. Could you do something? Okay, that's a big boy. Now that I know I can complete this dungeon and get so many ancient civilization parts each time, this is another dungeon I know I can farm. And that's a pretty good schematic I got for this dungeon considering its level. And I also got a foot which gives a skill called Dragon Meteor. I'm not sure how good that is but one day I will find out. I was trying to spend some quality time with the pals the next day. And then I got raided. 
again like these weights are getting a lot more frequent this is another one of those times where i'm not sure what was going on so i just shot in the general direction of all the chaos i'm not sure why but this weight ended a lot quicker and a lot sooner than i was expecting d96 what's the log ah yes let's see i ran out of power at base and thought building a second generator would actually solve the problem but then I forgot that you need an electric pal to actually power the generator. So after doing all of that madness, I brought out Grizzbolt and that solved the problem. I needed pallium fragments to make Relaxaurus's missile launcher. So I came to this dungeon just to get that. And in about 50 years, I'll finally have myself a missile launcher. Well, it has been 50 years and I finally have myself that missile launcher. Okay, now it's time to test it, of course. What? What I did not know is that you can rapid fire it. Look at this. Oh, I see you. <laughs> what? Oh no. And as an explosives enthusiast myself, this guy became my new best friend. I was raided again later that day, but this time I've got myself a missile launcher. Now it's time to go wreak some havoc on these invaders. Time to test it out, mate. What is this? What is this? <laughs> The next day I went out trying to capture some pals that I haven't gotten all 10 XE bonuses for yet, so I'll get those big bonuses and level up. Another day, another raid. Come on. It's like I'm not even getting a chance here, mate. Just take a look at everything that's going on right now. Well, I survived that onslaught of rabid pals, but some of my pals didn't. I don't know why I was standing here all night that night, but uh, yeah. More spheres were crafted because I wanted to get to level 49. Because there was something that I really, really wanted to see. There we go. And now I can craft myself my very own rocket launcher. And it only took 100 days. And this video cannot end until I test fire this. And I knew exactly where to test it. And just look at that attack. Wow. Well, it's time for round two against the big bad guardian of the dark sun. <sighs> this was my most difficult battle yet. Of course it missed. Two hundred damage alone. So I finally found out at this point why certain pals take a lot less damage. All of these boss-like creatures you see roaming around take a lot less damage, that's the first thing. But the second thing is their level. Just like how leveling up a pal increases their defense, that same mechanic applies to all of the wild pals too. Why are you so fast? Where are you going? How hard is this guy? This Anubis guy really earns that name, Guardian of the Dark Sun, because this guy was a literal chief. I prevailed in the battle, but uh, at what cost? Well, there's a bit of a bug for you to end this video off, and I hope you guys enjoyed this journey as much as I did. And I hope you are looking forward to seeing what happens next, because this journey is far from over. And if you like what you see, subscribe and hit the bell for more, and let's enjoy this moment.